What's up guys, Don't Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to another Laser Pig video. So this is actually, I believe, his first video he ever made, and it is about tanks. Shocker, it seems like three quarters of his videos are either about tanks or airplanes. Um, obviously he's a big history guy in that kind of niche, uh, the tank slash plane niche, right? The, uh, I don't even know what you would call that subgenre of history, but there's a lot of people that are really into it. Um, but anyway, this one is Laser Pig Talks Tank, the first tank, also the second. Uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, and again, like this is not exactly the niche of history I'm super into. Um, you know, I'm more into uh, ancient history. Um, you know, prehistoric, the prehistoric era, the ancient era, the classical era, um, pretty much everything up till the medieval era. Um, is what I, I really enjoy learning about, but I, I do enjoy learning about other stuff, but that's really my, uh, I guess like you could say my like, area of expertise. I'm, you know, by no means an expert, but it's definitely where I have more knowledge. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, the original tank was created by British farmers uh, in the lead up to World War One. if I'm correct there. That may just be apocryphal, um, but I have read that in multiple places before, but again, that may just be some apocryphal take. You see this with like a lot of different technologies where like 15 different countries will claim credit for it, and then you really find out, well, no, none of these people actually did. Some dude created it 20 years before that. Um, but anyway, link to the original video down below, and again, this is Laser Pig Talks Tank, the first tank, also the second, and let's jump into it. But what are tanks, and how do tanks, and where is how tank? Well, tanks were invented by a Sir Henry tank in the little town of Tankington in New Mexico. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be serious. Tanks! Big things with big guns, but where do tanks come from? And which tank is the best tank? All these questions and more shall be asked by me. <laughs> A lot of people think this is the first tank. Oh, that's Da Vinci, they right? Wrong. Let me put it like this. When I was seven, I drew a picture of a spaceship. It had detailed interiors and everything. It could fly, <laughs> shoot lasers, go to other galaxies. But even though I drew it, I can hardly claim credit for inventing Earth's first intergalactic space travel machine, can I? Yeah, you see this a lot with like a lot of Da Vinci's drawings. Uh, you know, revolutionary as they were, right? Like as ahead of his time as he was thinking. That doesn't mean he invented the first parachute. That doesn't mean he invented the first airplane. That doesn't mean he invented the first tank. Um, I see this all the time when it comes to Da Vinci's drawings. And again, like, yeah, they were revolutionary. They were cutting edge. And he was definitely ahead of his times in some regards. Like, so ahead of his times that they didn't literally have the materials to make that kind of stuff. Um, but, the, you know, he didn't invent it, right? He theorized about it. That's the best way to put it. Right? But by that same logic, like he was saying here... You could say whoever the first sci-fi author was invented interstellar travel when they clearly didn't. <clears throat> ah, yes, it is the future. Congratulations, Mr. Future Scientist Man. You have invented the impossible, a machine that can travel to other galaxies. But wait! The audience cries. This came from 2,000 years ago, invented it first. <laughs> yeah. They cried boos and throw things, and then they build a statue of me. And uh, See, that, that, that's never going to happen now, is it? Credit for the invention goes to the first person to actually build it. True. Not come up with the idea. And Da Vinci's idea never worked. Purposefully, it never worked. This is not a tank. Stop trying to pretend it is. Neither is this. Or this Soviet thing. This is called a big wheel landship. It was a popular design idea at the time. They built a mock-up prototype and it immediately sank into a swamp. It, it didn't work. That's fine. Oh, that exp I always see those things in like steampunk stuff. That explains where they came from. I always wondered what those were. But none were ever built. Well, the Soviets still keep referring to it as a tank because they like to claim they invented it. Or this... You want to talk about this? How about we talk about this thing? You want to do a Lindy Beach style three hour long video on the entire community of military enthusiasts who generally thought attaching big wheels to battleships and driving them ashore would be a good idea? Because these are the same kind of people who think future tanks would have two guns and hover about using magic, or as we like to call them, idiots. And trust me, in the military enthusiasts, Paradise. Community, there is Paradox, a Hearts of Iron 4 forums. We'll That's talk funny. About them later. You will never find. <laughs> so, with that out of the way, what actually did kick off tank design? What was the first real tank? 
Well, in 1914, something very interesting happened. Sorry that this is, like, very quiet. Um, he's definitely improved his audio since this, but this is his first video, so his audio is very quiet. I literally have this as loud as it will go. And I have my mixer as high as it will go, and that is still as loud as it's getting. <laughs> Yes, it's World War One. An old man that a lot of people like but no one really knows gets killed by an assassin. The country that at least amounts to the other country threaten that country with war. That country then appeals to the another country and says, come help us. And the first country then starts appealing to other countries to help him. And then before you know it, bullshit, 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 bullshit. Everyone is at war and about a million people die within the first five years months because war has very well technology has very very rapidly changed and no one really knows exactly what to do the the upper echelons of every military structure on every european nation are filled to the brim with stuffy old colonels and mustache wearing upper class toffs who have basically become generals because they have a lot of money men are cut down left right and center a stalemate ensues, and for years, trenches full of soldiers sit and stare at each other across a minefield of fortifications. The upper class twatry have absolutely no idea what to do outside of the only tactic that they know, which is getting everyone to jump out of their trenches and charge at the enemy. The results of this were less than encouraging. Troops were dying by the truckload over turfs of land no more than a meter wide. And the ones that were surviving were starting to question their leader's ability. Talk of revolution was in the trenches, and in Russia, revolution happened. In France, revolution was on everyone's lips. Troops were refusing to go down to the front lines, refusing to go into this first line of trenches, and refusing to fight. So a new solution had to be provided, something that would break the stalemate. Lots of ideas were tried. Bigger artillery, grenades, rifle grenades, bigger artillery, mortars, this slingshot thing, bigger artillery, this medieval crossbow that, that fired tiny balls, I, I don't understand, bigger <laughs> artillery, and whatever the hell this thing is. But the hell? it was all to no avail. Thankfully, some looks like a weird motor launcher. Famed writer H.G. Wells had envisioned a motorized vehicle armed enough that it would be immune to machine gun fire and would be able to carry its own gun to destroy fortified positions and drop off troops to capture defenses. Now, H.G. Wells being H.G. Wells who came up with ideas like this. Oh dear. That's a dress. This was intriguing. I wonder just how far women would permit this to go. Had envisioned an <laughs> so fish with hard laser gun. I don't understand the but context of it at all. The idea caught the public's imagination, and discussions on how this new weapon would work were rampant in the street. There were, of course, two problems. For one, the general public have absolutely no idea how military strategy works or how a military vehicle should work. And for two, this weapon already existed. It was called the armored car. It was effectively a civilian car, armed with steel plate and a machine gun on top. Rolls-Royce had began producing a dedicated military version in 1914 that was so effective it was still being used in World War II. And there are still many examples around today. Oh, that's cool. actually pretty cool looking. But that wasn't the problem. The problem was the area between the trenches, no man's land, was covered in craters, huge holes left by artillery, as well as large metal spikes, barbed wires, mines, and mud that had the consistency of glue and acted like quicksand sucking. Yeah, basically shit your fucking, you know, 1914 car with its, like, you know, old buggy tires isn't gonna get through. ...everything down, much like the mood whenever you walk into the room. Being immune to machine gun bullets wasn't a problem. Having something that could cross a trench and then cross that terrain and be immune to machine gun bullets was the problem. So, in 1915, everybody's favorite savage one-liner dropping gangster war criminal Winston Churchill <laughs> set up the Landship Committee. If I was to explain the Landship Committee to you, you need to remember several things. Number one, this is in Britain, and Britain has a lot of weird, clappy-trappy, upper toffery, booha bureaucracy to go through. Number one being that the Naval Admiralty, the Board of Naval People, 
uh, kind of are very, very important. And they have a lot of resources, and they have a lot of priority over resources of men of dockyards because the navy is incredibly important. True. And they get very, very, very pissed off at the Home Office because into that suddenly comes the Royal Air Force, and the Royal Air Force have complete autonomy. They are their own thing, and now they need resources. They need metal to build planes and men to to equip them. And, and I mean, it made sense, right? Like you got to think, Britain's on an island. The most important thing to them is uh, the navy. They barely need a standing army, and then obviously airplanes come around, and then now that's going to be you know one of, if not the most important thing, probably the most important thing by the time they get to World War Two, and they have you know the battle across the English Channel fly them and maintain them and train them and they need their own airfields and everything and that pisses the Admiralty off because that's that's their resources they're being taken away for something else so how do you think they would feel if a third competitor suddenly appeared on on the field also needed their <coughs> own things and that that was a bit of a problem so Churchill in his pimpness mightiness decided just to ignore all that and do it himself literally <laughs> i mean not literally i mean he didn't just go out into a field and go, i should build a machine that will that will win the war and just start banging things no he didn't actually didn't do that um i mean that would be amazing if he did but he, that's not what he did uh, what he did was he got some people together and he said well, <laughs> master the encore not doing the job, eight playing master nothing to she daddy bumble <laughs> that's what he did that's how that's how he sounds in my mind if you hiked him on the beaches and on the landing grounds and in the pubs and in the fields and i should kick that bloody ass um, far too coherent to be churchill yes. Uh, <clears throat> I remember, you know, I've read this speech before, and I'm like, oh, that's such a good speech. And then I watch the video of the speech, and you can barely understand a fucking word Churchill is saying. Like, I don't understand how anyone understood him. Friendship committee. Right. So they test out a bunch of uh, various machines, you know, like this one, which looks like a tram. It's it's called an induction. I don't know. Uh, this one, which is a big wheel landship, a bigger wheel landship, and an even bigger wheel landship. They actually the first big wheel just looked like a tractor with big and wheels. Then eventually, realize and at this thing with the dinner plates on the on the wheels. This is a train with and then they realize weird that tires. Tracks work best. And the vehicle they're testing here is uh, an artillery tractor, which is just designed to pull artillery. Around. And at this particular machine. Uh, the man who came up with the design was, was told, maybe you should put a gun and some armor on this thing and see how that works. And he refused to do it because he just didn't want to. Eventually, he <laughs> wanted Churchill to squat her up to and seize control of the operation. But by then, Churchill has something to show them. So he invites the top brass of the British military, royalty, a bunch of politicians, and some guy who had a camera to film everything. Out into the middle of a muddy field, in the rain, and in front of them, Big Willie. The second tank ever built, later renamed to Mother, because it's the mother of all tanks. There, of course, had been a tank built before that, the actual first ever tank, Little Willy, which many claim wasn't a real tank because it didn't have a gun. These people are idiots, and you can go ahead and ignore them. There was a gun turret on it, and it looked a bit like this. Here's a picture of it in real life. Sadly, it has a tarp over it to prevent the clever hun who's always watching from figuring out what this thing really is. But you can see the outline. So everyone is staring at this box thing as it drives around a muddy field up and down very steep hills made to represent a trench, goes over barbed wire, goes over a few areas, obstacles. And it's pretty obvious to everyone who's present that this is it. This is the solution. This is the answer to breaking the stalemate. And as one, they all come together and immediately start arguing. And I think... Sounds like Parliament. Can little something like this. <laughs> many, many, many hours later, the Minister of Munitions said he'd do it because it was raining and he just wanted to get home. That man was Lord George, who would eventually become Prime Minister. Here's a fact for you. The vehicles would be produced in artillery factories, and this is the bit everybody gets wrong. They were codenamed buses until it was decided that they wouldn't tell the factory workers what they were building and told them it was water-carrying tanks. And the name tank stuck. 
So the workers got to work. That's actually interesting. And after I'd... several months... The... I had no idea that was where the name Tank came from. Yeah. I mean, I guess that makes sense, right? Because... It's kind of funny, because, like, the way we use tank and vernacular nowadays, like, sometimes you'll, you'll hear of, like, people talk about tanks, like a tank to hold water or a tank to hold gas or whatever it is, like your gasoline tank or whatever. But usually when you think of tanks nowadays in, like, the general parlance, you know, you say, like, oh, that guy's a tank. It means he's, like, really strong and sturdy, but obviously that comes from tank. You, you Like, you like a tank in an RPG, but obviously that comes from tank. So, yeah, it is kind of funny that, like, even though, like, you know, because this has become, like, the general, most common usage of the word to talk about, like, military tax, you don't even think about, like, oh, where did that come from? Like, why is it associated with, like, something used to hold a liquid? The first tank was born. A decade before the talkies, a soldier addresses the talkies. audience directly a word I while behind while. the screen. A real actor speaks his line. I, I took a... Uh, oh, I can't remember what the course was called. It was like a history of film or something like that. I took it at university. And uh, like we talk, you go through like all the silent era and then like the talkie era, which is basically early sound films. And just like I heard the word talkie over and over again. I don't think I've heard it once since then. Ladies and gentlemen, I have but one word to say to you. Subscribe. Hello. <laughs> uh, if you're seeing this, then you've watched the entire video the whole way through. That's or I skip to the end. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Uh, my name's Laser Pig, and this video was an experiment. Uh, I, I've decided I don't want to be a gaming channel because let's let's be honest, the the market for YouTube gaming is just a, a little bit tiny, tiny bit oversaturated and uh true i mean i po i post a video like this i post a video about me talking like anything i can get like a couple hundred to a couple thousand views i post a gaming video and a, like it depends on what it is if it's like a really difficult achievement in a game some of them will get like a thousand couple thousand views but most of the time it gets like 20 views <laughs> yeah i know history i'm very passionate about history and i would like to do more historical content so if you liked if you like this video you know do the usual shit you know press the subscribe button leave a comment hit, hit the like it, it doesn't it doesn't harm you it helps me um it helps me quite a lot and all right well anyway my dog is freaking out but anyway i'm gonna leave her there let me know what you think like comment subscribe obviously this one's a little bit different than most of his videos uh not quite as humorous but obviously he, this is his first video so he's just kind of finding his you know finding his feel but uh I'll see you guys in the next one.